Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 20 in the book of Revelation. This is season 27 of Be With Me. We're in a passage where the Lord is walking among the seven churches of Western Turkey currently, which is Asia, the Roman province of Asia. And he comes to the city, uh, the church at, at Philadelphia, and he has all good things to say, actually. And we're going to do the second half today. We're going to start in verse 10. This is Revelation 3, verse 10. I'm going to title, title today, I am coming soon, and we are one day closer to soon. I think that's the official title, one day closer to soon. Verse 10, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have so that no one may seize your crown. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven and my own new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So verse 11, let me just start with that. I am coming soon. So that was 1,929 years ago. By my calculation, that was 700 and 4,085 days ago that in this vision, Jesus himself walked among the churches uh, and gave feedback to the churches and specifically here to the church at Philadelphia. In so doing, he revealed things about Philadelphia and he also revealed things about himself. So here's some feedback on that the Philadelphians got that you have kept my word and you have kept my word about patient endurance. And then he tells them, I am coming soon. Now think about this. The day that he's talking about didn't happen yesterday. So the Lord didn't come yesterday. And there's been a number of those days, 700,000 of them specifically. And so we are 700,000 days closer to what the Lord means by soon. I'm not sure what he... Not, and nobody does, knows exactly how, what the soon is. But the, the call is for patient endurance until that day. So that means steadfastness and perseverance. And it doesn't just mean gutting it out, patient endurance. It means waiting with hope, with an eye to that day that Jesus says is coming uh, soon. And so the expectation of that day is to help with this day. So there's this hope associated with his patient endurance. And this is also a characteristic of Christ. He's the one that patiently endured the cross. And he tells us in Matthew 10, 22, that the one who endures to the end shall be saved. So what is that day? The day is that he either comes here or the day that I go there. All right, because you have kept my word, about patient endurance. In other words, you have obeyed. I will keep you from the hour of trial. So this hour of trial is coming on the whole earth, and it's to try those who, quote, dwell on the earth. Now that's used uh, nine times in the book of, of Revelation 10. This is the 10th time, nine other times. And it's a, a code for, a technical term, for unbelievers in the book of Revelation. So though that dwell upon the earth generally means unbelievers in the book of Revelation. So this passage supports a pre-tribulation view of the timing of, of the rapture. So when he says that, uh, that he is going to keep them from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world, the idea is that the, that the church is going to be sent off the earth, rescued, raptured from the earth before this time of tribulation. So there is a defined and final period of testing that's coming on the world, specifically on unbelievers. And some unbelievers are going to be saved out of it. But what the question is, what happens to those who come into this time period as already believers? So a pre-tribulation view is the idea that the church 
and and this church would be spared from this coming coming trouble that is the, also known as the tribulation so that the church could be taken up before this major trial and that the trials are not for the church the trials are for those who don't believe and who hopefully will be repenting through it so the testing is for unbelievers during this trial and tribulation and they're repenting. So supporting this phrase is that I will keep you from the hour of trial. So I will keep you out of the trial. The, the Greek word means to keep you out of this rather than keeping the, a different word is used for those, for the Lord, if he would keep you through the trial, I will persevere you through the trial. So the word means I will keep you away from the trial or free from the trial. So this this passage uh, uh, supports the tree pre-trib view. So I'm a hopeful pre-trib, which means that I hope the Lord keep, <laughs> keeps the church from this. I am also a humble pre-trib view that I could be wrong. So stay st stay tuned. And if I'm wrong about this, Lord, help me see it. So the question is, is this concept only for theologian or is it for a guy in his bathrobe sitting in his green chair in the living room? So in general, the Lord has made his word understandable. And 1,500 podcasters or so are based on that assumption. So the Philadelphians here haven't de denied the, door, the Lord's name, even though they have little power. And little power is kind of a spiritual compliment. Jesus always uses the weak, the disenfranchised, the humble, and the vulnerable to great effect. He's asking them to hold fast what they have. Then true faith is demonstrated by perseverance. God helps us be unsnatchable, and he'll lose none that are truly his own. And he wants us to live a crownable life. So let's be like the Philadelphians. Let's let our steadfastness in our limitation with an eye towards the day that he says is coming soon. May that day empower this day. He calls us to patiently endure, hold fast, and keep on living a life that is crownable. Thanks for listening.